Hello and welcome to the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. Here is a really good example of a review that you could leave. Um, this one is from Lobster Johnson. Lobster Johnson. Uh, from, from politics, i.e. Serene Ardilianu. To everything else, Chrissy Mayer is so much fun to watch. She's smart, funny, quick, bright, and inquisitive. Pretty perfect combination. Oh, thanks, Lobster Johnson. Woo! I'm also really excited about our sponsors, uh, Silk City Hot Sauce. Guys, get some fucking flavor in your life. Go to SilkCityHotSauce.com. Use the promo code CMP. You're going to get 15% off your entire order. Plus, they're going to throw in for free a bottle of cherry sriracha and some cool stickers. Carl, do you like hot sauce? I love hot sauce. I like hot sauce. Ooh, what's your favorite kind? Well, it depends on what food that I'm eating. What if you're eating tacos? Um, so tacos, um, man. There, there's, there's the green there's, stuff there's, there's the red stuff yeah, most uh, people there, yeah there are so many good ones but it's really important to pair your hot sauce with the right cuisine i don't like people who think that hot sauce is a one size fits all it is no disgusting. it's not it, they're like they're like a fine wine you got to pick the right one for the right occasion and that's what's so great about Suck city hot sauce they have tons and tons of variety and healthy no, no crazy crappy ingredients like literally just five six ingredients um, if you're looking for hot, you found it. Silk City Hot Sauce. Use the promo code CMP. Get 15% off. You know what else is hot? Sex. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about something we all need more of. Not just sex, but great sex. Fellas, now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. That's blue, like the color blue. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Take them any day, day, night, whenever. Take them right now. Take them on a full stomach so you can be ready for when an opportunity arises. Ladies, you can get in on this too and get some for your man. Blue Chew is made in the USA. It's prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to make eye contact with any senior citizens. It's just it's cheaper and easier than a pharmacy they prepare it and ship it right to your door in a discreet package. No awkwardness, and you don't have to leave your house. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. And right now, we have a special deal for you. Go to BlueChew.com and your, use your first shipment. <laughs> Get your first shipment free. Just use the promo code CMP. All you're going to do is pay $5 in shipping. Again, that's Blue, B-L-U-E, Chew.com. Use the promo code CMP. Try it for free. It's faster, better, cheaper. I thank them so much for sponsoring this podcast. Remember, this podcast is free. And if you want to support me, support them. Get your dick hard. Use promo code CMP. Speaking of hard dicks, I'm very, very excited to have this guy on the podcast. It, all, it seems very, very timely right now uh, that it worked out. Um, he is the host of Who Are These Podcasts? Who Are These? Dot com. I think that's the right that's it. URL, right? It's Carl! Hey, hey. thanks so much for having me um i'm so glad you could do it like i honestly the even doing my re right? what compound show Com on, on your compound show right oh god <laughs> yes yes this is wet spot on compound media <laughs> okay good good yeah, that's what my agent told me I was oh doing my fucking god yeah carl is so great and to be totally honest he made me a little nervous doing my read and i was a little bit like oh god because carl reviews podcasts his show is called who are these podcasts and he will listen to podcasts and review them and you'll be super honest about who sucks who's great you know ways to improve and we sort of well we never really met but our first sort of interaction together was i guess maybe a year and a half ago you had reviewed one of my shows. Did you review this podcast or did you review? We did review this podcast, but that was after you reached out to me because you wanted to come on the show. And right. So I said, yes. <laughs> come on, Chrissy. Right. See, one of the great things about doing Who Are These Podcasts is other podcasters and comedians enjoy it because they also like shitting on people and roasting people. And they find this to be a great medium for that because you can just say, yeah, I know your show's fine. I was just going on the show to just a goof on it. So Chrissy wanted to come on. I was like, awesome. I love having comedians on. And then I told you to do some uh, research on Lewis's show, Lewis J. Gomez's oh show. Oh my God, that's right. 
Real Ass Podcast, was it? The Real Ass yeah. Podcast. And then uh, you decided to drop out and you went on the Real Ass Podcast instead. Oh God. You know, well, I well, really, we- now, now that I have a lot of perspective and I've really grown as a woman, <laughs> as an adult, uh, I'm able to look back and see how bad that looked. And I think I bailed one time and said, like, I bailed. And then I, I think maybe I talked about it on the Real Ass Podcast. Or maybe, I can't remember. Yeah, but- and I, I want to tell you, you're forgiven. We don't have to oh. We have since made up and all of <laughs> We did made we did make up and then I actually like called in or di- called into your show and it was just like awful time and place worst luck like I was at my boyfriend's son's little league show there was like no reception it was like <sighs> sound of wind probably the whole time and that ended up being like kind of a hard time anyway and uh it was just overall really bad timing which uh, i have to say this because we bashed you really hard after that and i know that our listeners went after you and you've always had a good sense of humor about it which is the right way to react and respond to that sort of thing so i've gained a ton of respect for you and i love the way that you've handled our feud over the last year and a half (laughs) it was a real beef yeah we were beefing hard for a year and a half and um yeah you've got to have a sense of humor you never said threatened to sue me it was great no, no. yeah and great. i'm a person who's done like 11 or 12 roast battles so it's like i have heard every horrible horrible thing that could be said about me i uh, i am very much like i'm okay with being made fun of it's like i get excited when i hear new insults that i haven't heard yet and uh, i kind of like throwing it back and i feel like as a comedian like you should be able to handle handle that and i also think it's really great what you're doing because your podcast actually wants me to be better and i think and i'm pretty new at this like i've only been doing this podcast like really hardcore since march like i started in january but um no actually may was when i really was like because it was after lockdown i was like let me turn up the juice on something because i can't really get on stage so that's when I really leaned into this. But the fact that we have shows that are out there reviewing us, for me, it makes me want to be better and it makes me want to step it up. And uh, well, that's what I- getting reviewed, Chrissy, I did a show this past weekend with Chad Zumach. Oh, did you? And he's got a few things to say about you. Oh, yeah. You know, I and I heard that show. I, I'm going to switch the interview right now. I want to talk to you about this. <laughs> Are you going to hijack my, my yeah. segment and make it about somebody you don't like? <laughs> I, I need to talk to you about this because what happened was I'm listening to Chad's show and Chad kind of out of nowhere just start, starts talking shit about you. Um, we, Chad, we, Chad has a podcast? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sit down with Zumak. Okay. I'm listening to sit down with Zumak and I hear him talk, bring you up and he's going hard at you. And so whatever, you know, you I and I listen to that you, or not. It's fine. <laughs> so whatever you and I have had our thing and you've had your thing with Centering John, which has really brought you into the WATP universe. And you had just talked to Mitch Fatal. And I wanted to play some clips of you talking to Mitch Fatal because Mitch was talking about Centering John. I thought it'd be interesting, especially for our listeners who are following all this stuff. And that just kind of like triggered Chad and he went off on you and he made it all about you. I'm like, well, we're not really talking about Chrissy right now. I'm kind of talking about Chad and what Mitch had to say. And he lost his mind. What the fuck is your yeah. history? With you tried Chad? so hard to have a segment about stuttering John and Chad was having no part of it. Like oh. he, you would try so hard to move on. Like he was unable to move on. He, I don't know why he was so triggered. And here's the thing, like when you're, and so he's, you know, hates me, hates me, hates me. Won't really say why, you know, and to, a, to the fans listening to that, they go, huh, this isn't adding up because he, this guy really hates this girl, but he's not really saying why. What does that make most people think that he tried to hook up or tried to flirt with me or made some kind of advance and I it was shut down because- I don't on that. I don't think that's the case, but- It's not the case, but I don't think Chad realized that is one of the ways he comes off. It's just right. kind of like, huh. And uh, you, you gave him so many outs. You were like, I get it. If you don't want to shit on comics, Jim Florentine was on. He didn't shit on anybody. He's a nice guy. Cause, but Jim doesn't shit on any comics. Chad was shitting on me. <laughs> but just, yeah. OP. Yeah, OP. He, he was shitting on people. He, he wouldn't shit on Stuttering John, but he was shitting on everybody else. Would not, would shit on <laughs> almost anybody but Stuttering John. Right. Uh, the, the person that you had him on kind of, to talk, well, you were talking about a bunch of other stuff, but you had 
very much a stuttering John segment and you tried to give him an out. He's like, I'm cool. We're having fun. I love you, man. And then you try so hard to make it about, you know, what you want to do because it was your show. And he's like, oh, she sucks. I don't understand. You know, I think he's really sore about not getting into the, the compound media world. I, I think he may have pitched a show that never got picked up. I think like, he'll go back and forth. Like he'll say, oh, uh, Kumia has problematic views. People don't want to, you know, be seen with him. But the, but on the other hand, I'll be like, well, Chrissy's only anybody because of Kumia and Compound Media. So I was like, well, which is it, Chad? That's a good point because when I said, well, you know, Chrissy's doing a stand-up show this weekend in Atlantic City. It's got all the people from the Compound. He goes, well, yeah, but that's because no one wants to be with Kumia because he's so far right wing. And I was thinking, well, that's not true. I don't. No, think the shows were packed. The they that- were. As full as they could have been with us doing, I mean, they say it was 25%. They looked very full. I saw like few empty tables. It was like, I, I think they really sold a shit ton of tickets. We had three shows in two nights. Uh, it was awesome. So, so you have a record to say that the reason why he has a problem with you is because you got a show on Compound and he didn't and that he's jealous of your success. I feel like it's jealousy because okay. I, he doesn't know me well enough to, to know much else. Or it could be he's trying to impress Stuttering John by also like <laughs> hating me. <laughs> or it could be that he's trying to impress Kevin Brennan, who, you know, th- th- they were kind of like goofing on me. And I don't even have beef with Kevin Brennan. I remember when I was pitching my show to Compound Media, I'd be calling him on the phone like, a few times and he was he gave really helpful advice he was like always really great to talk to so i'm not sure like so what, where being, it's coming from kind of channeling his inner kevin brennan he seemed to be like wanting to burn bridges but also yeah. controversial do you think that, what is his relationship with kevin i you know i don't really know i know that he kind of invited himself on to be kind of a mlc co-host um i know that he would come on burning bridges when it was on compound. But other than that, like, I don't really know. Maybe he thinks that that's a good style. Maybe he also kind of wants to be like edgy and hate people. And this is what makes me interesting is that I just hate people, but then I don't really have a great reason to back it up. And one of the, when he was coming back around, when you tried so hard to push the segment forward, he was like, she came after me. Like the honest sequence of events there was like, I didn't even know who Chad was till I saw he, and I'm not saying that in the way that Chad says it, where he he knows exactly who the person is, you know, but I, I heard, started hearing of him because he was shitting on my friend, um, Stacy Pressman on Twitter. And then I sort of like wrote back, like, all right, stop it. Or I don't know. I forget what I said. I, I may have like told him like, to uh, shut the fuck up. Here, he said that you didn't take things well with your Twitter beef or something like that. No, that really. Was- I just, I just sort of like, was like, Hey, stop shitting on her. Like what, you, what the fuck dude. And then he started coming after me and he, he started shitting on me. Cause I, at the time had less Twitter followers than him. I had like 14 or 15 K whatever. And then he had more, Oh, you have like no followers. And then I would take screenshots of social blade. Um, and I was like, look, you can tell that he buys followers. Like, and he, even as recently as this past August, I was like, Chad buys followers. Don't shit on me for having a shitty Twitter following when you buy followers. And he got so salty. He deleted the whole thread and then blocked me. That is what Chad means when he says uh, that I don't play ball. Ah, okay. That's funny. All right. So that's actually what the story is. He also- that's why he's salty. That's why he kind of like chirped up and got upset oh twitter she has some and now guess who has more twitter files than him me but get, you wouldn't know that because i don't fucking give a shit and are they real people how many of them are mm. bots Chrissy? let's come uh, clean right they're now. all real they're all real i think very very early on like maybe two years in comedy maybe i bought some and then i realized very quickly like oh this is such a bad look they're bots that end up kind of dying off pretty quickly anyway yeah. so you have to keep rebuying them and if you look at chad's um social blade you can see because it's a sharp spike when he buys and then they fall off and then he has to buy again it's also a bad look one of the things that i notice and i don't care when people are following somebody i look at interaction so opie has hundreds of thousands of followers he puts out a tweet and eight people like it you're like hmm something's where, not yeah up here. where is everybody <laughs> he's just like <laughs> yelling into a big room with nobody in it yeah so another thing that he said he said this on his podcast 
when I was listening to it. And then he said it on mine. He wouldn't say who, but he said, he sent your stand up to a woman that you both know who agreed that you suck. Yeah, I'm not sure. Was I'm not sure what compelled Chad to do this. I was on Laughs on Fox when I was that that show came out when I was either a two or three year comedian. I was only two or three years in. I don't know that I don't know why Chad needs to feel like he's a big man by taking a clip from when I was two or three years into comedy and sending it around. Um, If he wants to judge me on that, sure, go ahead. I would like to think I'm better now than I was at two years in but you know um i'm not digging up really old clips of his stand-up and sending it to people but and then this is how you can tell he's so full of shit like he is obsessed with celebrity and and like being next to people that are famous and well known that's the only reason why he fucks with stuttering john that and because he retweets him wow i mean you can't ever disown somebody who retweets you um, he's, a, I think he's obsessed with these things. Cause he, you know, when you listen to people talk, especially with Chad, when he talks about other people like me, you listen really hard. It's like, he's actually talking about himself. Um, I've picked up on that a lot. Yeah. When I listen to podcasts. There's a lot of projection going on. So much projection. Oh, she just, but I'm like, Chad, you, you are the one who wants to be famous because why would you mention a really famous comedian, but not say the name to prove the point? You just want to let everybody know that, you know, a really famous comedian. What do you think it was? I'm going to go with uh, Tammy Pescatelli. Who's, who's your guest? On this one? I don't even know who he knows. I don't even know like who he's friends with. Well, pro- probably Amy Schumer. He probably talks with Amy quite a bit. I would guess. I mean, I don't know if she know. I don't know that, that she knows who I am. I think, you know, she's in a different level of people. I want to do something. I want to back up real quick because mm-hmm. we're kind of talking back about- Back it up, back it up. And, and I don't know that everybody who's watching and listening to Chrissy Mayer podcast knows what we're talking about. On WATP, we do a segment about Stuttering John very often because John has just gone off the rails, as you've discovered. And he's <laughs> yes. just lost it. So he did a show with Hale Sparks where they were watching the presidential debate and then John was wasted afterwards. Oh, so I really was excited to play these clips of John being wasted on YouTube so that we could goof on him a little bit. And Chad was on as my co-host. We have a rotating list of co-hosts that come on. Chad was on for the first time. What's crazy about it is I talked to him on the phone the day before and I said, are you cool with doing stuttering John? Because honestly, I don't know with comedians if they want to talk shit or not. And I don't want to get into a thing where I have 12 clips that I want to play where I have notes about them. Like, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. And the, the person I'm talking to doesn't want to talk about it. Like, that sucks. Yeah, it's a speed bump for the whole show. And you're like, Ugh. and then your job as a host is harder because you've got to now struggle to find something else that'll keep it going back and forth. Like, that's why, like, you always ask people, like, what do you want to talk about? What don't you want to talk about? You know? Well, with WATP, it's a little bit of a different show format than a lot of these podcasts that have guests on. I'm not there to talk about them. We're going to talk together about very specific things. So I have the the show kind of mapped out. I have notes for it. I have all the clips ready to go. And I think think a couple of things were going on here. A, because Chad was fine with it when I talked to him on the phone. Then he comes out and he's like, I'm not going to talk about Southern Giant. I just want to talk about Chrissy Mayer. I think he might have been trolling me. (laughs) It sounds to me, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like yeah. he was like, I'm going to go on this podcast and, uh, and make Stuttering John look really good. I'm going right. to try to win some why, people back. The reason why I think Chad was trolling me, and I like it. I appreciate that he did this. I, I'm really glad that Chad came on because it's been a very controversial episode that we put out. But I think he was trolling me because he said, I can't shit on John because he retweeted me, <laughs> which is a silly thing to say. And when I said, what, you're excited about a retweet? He goes, it worked really well. Apparently he retweeted when he was promoting some show and he got a lot of people to go to the show. And that's how I know he's trolling because that's a lie. Suddenly wow. John tweets have no weight to them. Nobody cares what John is talking about on Twitter. Wow. Yeah. So I think he was trolling me. I think he did a spectacular job. And Chad, if you want to come clean, that'd be awesome. But I don't really care either way. It was funny. It does sound like a troll. You're like, you're on for this purpose to talk about this one thing. And he's like, well... I'll shit on everybody but Stuttering John. And I love, this is where I gained even more respect for you. You were like, yeah, right, you're not going to pretend. You're like, I won't pretend that he's talented or good at podcasting. There's no way you can pretend that. And you were like, made it known. You're like, even if you're pretending to be his friend for, you know, for a smart diplomatic strategic move, like we can't deny that he fucking sucks at podcasting. <laughs> right, I go, I go, Chad, this isn't about friendships. This is a roast. We're yeah. making fun of a shitty podcast and I'm playing you evidence that he sucks at podcasting. It's kind of what we do here. Your argument that he retweeted you and therefore 
we can't say anything bad about him is silly. It's a silly argument to make. It's based on the format of our show. It just it's so superficial. But he it's really so... just went after you so hard. And yeah. it was it was really bizarre. I loved the video that you put out <laughs> yeah. later that day. Oh boy. And yes. I think maybe you uh fueled some of that speculation that uh he was in love with you and that's why yeah so i'm not fly. sure all the he he also said like oh they are trying to prop her up i'm like who is the they chad like i don't have a manager i have no management i i do two podcasts which is something that a lot of comedians do like what they i mean do you, what do you think like anthony cumia and like a bunch of dudes are meeting up talking about what they want to have me say like that's how he makes it sound that like i get fed opinions or lines or that oh it must have been anthony cumia who told me to say that john stabbles dabbles in stand-up like that i couldn't think of that on my own is kind of amazing but right so that was interesting because stuttering john had a similar thing with you after he wasn't happy with the interview which was all his fault not yours <laughs> but after he was unhappy with the interview he was talking about how you're trying to become famous and get on SNL. I was like, what? where is this coming from? If That's he a- knew <laughs> anything about me, which he doesn't, it's like yeah. <laughs> nothing about me says SNL. I, oh, my shit is not politically correct, you know? So no, I know if you're trying to get on SNL, you're do- going about it all the wrong way. Yeah. For sure. Um, just because somebody does characters and does impressions and does stand up doesn't mean they're trying to get on SNL. So Stuttering John is obviously beefing with you. And what I love about John is he has a show format that's the worst format he could possibly have. He reads people's questions in real time and responds <laughs> to them, which just invites trolls. So I don't know how many people are watching him at any given time, maybe a couple hundred. Probably 50 to 70% of those people are trolling him. Wow. And uh, they're fans of yours, right? Yeah, probably listeners to our show and uh, Revenge of the Sis and some of the other, maybe your show, some of the other shows that have goofed on him. So they're in there trolling him and John, so they ask about you every single episode. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. that makes you feel he loved. Gonna, oh, I'm not going to talk about her. Uh. Do they have to pay? Do they, does he do the super chat where he wants to make money off of people asking him questions? He does. Yeah. I think oh. that's his main source of income these days. <laughs> the super chats on YouTube. How do you file taxes for super chats? <laughs> <laughs> so he made a comment the other day. I want to ask you about this because again, I'm interviewing you if you hadn't noticed. He made a comment the other day because he wants to be mad at you. So he has to figure out reasons. Think of something. I I actually played a clip on my show. He said, you tweeted pictures of his kids with comments about And this is something I, yeah, was wanted to address here. And then also I'm going to talk about it on the show on West Spot tonight too. I actually have no idea what he's talking about. I didn't even know he had kids until I heard about this. I didn't know he had kids. I didn't know he had pictures of twids of kids. I also didn't know someone has been tweeting pictures of his kids. Like Anthony, uh, did. Anthony actually crushed him pretty hard uh, tweeting pictures of his kids. So he's got to be with Anthony about that. But okay. now what he likes to do because for WATP, we try not to deal with people's personal lives and anything like that. When people are like, oh, you should rip on this person for this thing. It's like, no, I rip on their show. I just think the yeah. show talks and I make fun of the No, show. no, make fun of their cancer. Come on. <laughs> <You're> right, <no. laughs> Come on, so, he's going to die. <laughs> John's whole thing is if you goof on him because he's not good as a broadcaster or a comedian, he knows that that's petty. So he tries to pretend that you made it personal. Well, yes. she tweeted about my kids. So now I'm really pissed off. And what he said was he's taking care of things behind the scenes. Did you hear this? I did hear that. Yeah. Um, so what does that mean? Is he trying to sound tough funny. like a thug? What does behind the scenes mean? Is he gonna get prank call me? What? <laughs> you know what he's like this he and Chad are insecure in exactly the same way. Like it you you don't have the self-awareness or I don't know, like the, whatever it is to <laughs> hear that someone thinks you suck at podcasting or at stand-up or whatever, or, or like, oh God, like perish the thought that I didn't have stuttering John on my podcast just so I could fucking suck his dick for an hour and tell him how great he was 25 years ago. No, like I just wanted to, it didn't seem to me that he was doing very much stand-up. I haven't seen him perform any place I've ever performed. I've never seen his name on a marquee of right. any place I've ever been. So that's, I mean, Dabble was not trying to fuck with him. Uh, but like, I don't understand why you would take it to this level list. Like, why would he have to become a thug? Like, is it easier for him to threaten me than it is for him to acknowledge that he's not a fucking stand-up giant? 
Well, that's the crazy thing is that he has his own platform. And I've tried to explain this to him multiple times. John, if you think that we suck, then make fun of us. Like, yeah. If you want to say that Chrissy sucks, then replay the part of the interview where she did something wrong and make fun of her or whatever you want to do, analyze it. Instead, he has to pretend you did something you didn't do and then threaten you with this ominous threat of behind the scenes, we're going to get her, which yeah. I don't know what that means. He's done the same thing to me. It could be a legal thing, which there's nothing legal going on. So you'd have to think that it would be maybe like he knows people that you know who could maybe stop you from getting opportunities that you might get. Like that's wow. the shit he makes fun of Howard Stern for. Yeah. If that's yeah, what. Maybe he's confusing me for, so Anthony Cumia is somebody who's made fun of his kids at one point. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty well known that Ant tweeted out some pictures of his kids with some pretty funny uh, So walks. now, because I have a show on Anthony Cumia's network, that means that I tweeted out. <laughs> and by the way, that was years ago. It was back, I believe it was back when it was the uh, Artie and Anthony show. And Artie Lang has a very close personal relationship, or did, with Stuttering John. So they would goof on John coming from a place of, I worked with this guy at the Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah I know he him knew. Very well. And that's why I really wanted to talk to Mitch Fatel, who's the coolest, nicest guy. I'd never spoken to him ever. And then within five minutes of doing a podcast with him, I was like, oh, wow, he's so easy to talk to. This is great. This guy's super likable. He's like secure. <laughs> he's, you know. That was another person that she had shit all over. I'm like, that's not even the point that it's Mitch oh Fatel. God. I just want to talk about the fact that he was also an intern on Howard Stern show and he was friends with John when they were at NYU. Like, that's all I'm trying to talk about. He's like, well, who the fuck is Mitch Fatel? He's not even a good comedian. I'm like, okay. He gets so know. mad. Oh, nobody <laughs> talks about Mitch Fatel. Guess who's talking about Mitch Fatel right now? You, Chad. You are talking about Mitch Mitch Fatel at this very moment. Yeah, I guess he was trying to put you down by saying that Mitch Fatel wasn't a good guy. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But um, uh, he but was it, interesting. The yeah. With the stuttering John thing is that he was coming at it as if he was doing you a favor, as you know. So arrogant, so cocky. Like I am this little girl who needs so desperately the big strong man who was a stuttering intern 20 years ago that <laughs> that was his, you know what I mean? Like everything associated with stuttering John has a was in it. Correct. Any compliment that involves stuttering John is was based. It's not currently based. So he thinks that He's doing you a favor because that's a great get for the Chrissy Mayer podcast. It's going to put you on the map. <laughs> what he's not understanding is famous off him. Yeah. People who are huge Howard Stern fans, and don't get me wrong, that show was enormous, and there are millions of people who loved that era when he was on the show. But you had Jackie Martling on your show. Yeah. Jackie Martling was an actual writer on the show. He was on air, he's in studio all the time. That's a way bigger get from the old Howard Stern days. Mm -hmm. stuttering john is and john thinks he's more famous because he was on the tonight show nobody cares the tonight show doesn't mean anything nobody watches that shit except for the midwest and and yeah. people in their 60s like it's not a good show i don't yeah. think that was a good comedian i'm not shitting on jay but honestly the tonight show was not a big deal nobody cares about that it really now. wasn't and jackie still of like touring comedian he's, he's like a buddy of mine like we we text and stuff so it's like to me i thought like i thought starting john would be like kind of an easy get because like i did his oh. show and then it's no, no big deal and he oh like it's a huge favor i didn't really want to do it like john at any point you could have canceled you know what i mean john needs the big deal too. yeah I don't know why he thinks he's doing you a favor. He needs more people watching and listening to his show. He doesn't have that many. He's doing ad reads for a buddy's house of his that he's trying to sell in LA. Is what? one of his ad reads. Like, Dude, you're not doing well. You need Thanks. the exposure. It's, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, that's, even if you are kind of famous or whatever, like that's, the, I think that's the quickest way to turn off fans or potential fans by acting like you're hot shit and you don't need anybody and like, I don't know. I, I, I'll tell that's... you this. I learned early on from, do you know who Dick Masterson is? Um, yes. Why does the name sound so familiar? He hosts a show called The Dick Show. He used to be on The Biggest Problem in the Universe with Maddox. Okay. Anyway, Dick Masterson has a very large podcast, and he had me on his show. And immediately when I, we were talking about my show, he goes, can I come on there? I'd love to come on and guest host. And my show was way smaller than his. And he took the time to come on and then he came on a few more times. And now we co-host a show together that comes out uh, pretty much monthly on our Patreon. 
And he took the time, and I saw this with a bunch of other podcasters too, to do shows that weren't going to get him ahead in any way. And I learned from him on that where people ask me to do their show, I always try to make it a point to do their show. Not, even if it won't gain me more listeners, I think it's just a good thing to do to try yeah. to pop up all the other podcasters that you enjoy, they're doing the right thing, that are putting out quality shows and, and try to keep all this stuff going. The idea that you're on too good for this show, but this show I will do, it's just a shitty attitude. It's a shitty way yeah. to live your life. It's also like you want to be, and I kind of agree with you. Like I'll try to do anybody's show who asks because I think it's a compliment that they're asking. And also I want to be part of a good show. Like if I'm on somebody's podcast, like I'm going to try and make it as engaging or funny as possible and like that's the thing stuttering johns was not funny it was like he he made it about trump he you know what, like, go for a joke that's just so funny it's like you gave him this is the thing that set him off and i gotta talk to you about this because it's so funny you go all right here's my question is trump good or bad for comedy now i'm gonna be honest that's a great question because Trump has changed comedy. It's changed, he's changed the comedy landscape. I used to have a Twitter feed full of comedians that I really enjoyed. I can't look at that Twitter feed anymore. It's no longer fun or funny. So you could say Trump has been bad for comedy because some of the funniest people in the world or in the US are left leaning yes. and they're they going make- through this Trump derangement syndrome that they can't be funny anymore because they're fighting this power and they have to. So he's been bad. I mean, that's how I would answer that question. Now you could also say he's good for comedy because obviously you got the Colbert and all these other people who are just have made it the platform to goof on Trump. You know, yeah. the, the, the late show. night. No, yeah. if anyone's watching that garbage. Almost like they're recycling the same jokes and the same right. takes. You have SNL, who's like the safest takes. Oh my God. It's like, I was just saying the other day, I was like, Kate McKinnon did a Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's just sitting there in a robe and looking up. And that even to me was funnier than her Greta Thunberg impression. Like, she's so damn talented. I feel like that show must be stifling her and anybody who works there. It's just, unless you actually genuinely really feel, feel that way. And you have all liberal thoughts and it's just hard. It's hard to be funny when it's more important to be like woke or politically yes. correct. So that was a great question because you could answer it in different ways. And guess what? You and, didn't even do stand up, and you answered that. Right. I mean, I, I mean, you just know how this works. And John goes, what are we just going to talk about Trump all day? It's like, well, that wasn't a Trump question. You idiots. That was a fucking culture question. A comedy question. It's a culture question. Like, what is this good or bad for comedy? I can tell you it's really bad for him because he's doing a show three days a week where he does nothing but talk about election fraud and fucking boring nonsense. Like, this isn't a show. You're preaching to the choir, talking in an echo chamber. He thinks he's going to change people's mind. Anyone who would support Trump or not be far left leaning is not going to spend two seconds listening to his show. It's not funny or entertaining. No. He's not understanding how this works at all. And that's the Sorry, thing. I thought that was a good question. If, thank you. Thank you. And it's, it's like the thing is like, if I was a very liberal person, I'm smart enough, like comedy wise to know, okay, like, well, let me just try to have the, the widest, like threat, like cast a wide net comedy wise. Like, let me still just try to be funny. Maybe I won't, I'll lean away from my like politics stuff just to like, keep it going, keep people liking you and, and tuning in. Cause I agree with you. I think a lot of these, like, super liberal comics have like really turned a lot of people off because like and there's, there are people who can pull it off like bill maher i think can pull it off bill maher is very far left leaning but he will have some pretty funny jokes and he, he actually is a good writer and he isn't so much in bed with the democratic party that he won't goof on some of the yeah. things that they're doing and i always respect that it's like i you know if a comedian is kind of right leaning or left leaning as long as they have a good perspective on things and they're making jokes about everything, then you can make it work. But yeah, I agree with you. I, I think one of the things that you learn when you put yourself out there is when you turn a bunch of people off at once, it's not all that great <laughs> for you. Oh, which I've done many times. I've had whole groups of people coming after me. I had like, it happens like, it seems to happen like every six months, I piss off like a huge group of people. Um, and yeah, it, exactly. Like Bill Maher has a sense of humor. He's not like, well, Joe Biden retweeted me once. He's a nice guy. I'm not going to say anything <laughs> bad about him. Biden. He retweeted me. He's a great guy. <laughs> Biden retweeted me once. You know, a lot of people tuned in because of him. Again, I want to say, Chad, I enjoyed you on the show. And I appreciate that you came on. You spent some time with us. It was fun. Aww. I just think he was trolling me. Troll, yeah, I think so. It looks a little bit like a troll. I just don't know why he's so upset with me. I think maybe because I pointed out that he buys Twitter followers. Um, I think he's pissed that I now have more followers than him. I think he 
it sucks. I mean, he kind of looks misogynistic because to him, it seems like I can't understand why this girl comic would get it at compound media. He like can't understand. He can't understand why anybody likes me. So like, to me, that's kind of like a misogyny thing, but you know what? Yeah. Pull up a clip from when I was a couple years in to make yourself feel better. I don't know. Or you can always be like centering John and scrub the internet of all your shitty performances. Oh my God. Or yeah, let me put out something that. where I'm lifting my shirt up. <laughs> why did stuttering john threaten you oh i made fun of his podcast okay okay we, that was I, it I, <laughs> that's all I, it takes honestly, oh it's it's crazy honestly it, this was a couple of years ago now we just did a, a regular review stuttering john podcast just like we do everyone's podcast and i mean it's so easy to make fun of don't get me wrong we, we it was a really funny episode because the guys i did like, your show uh come nuts. on i did your show i retweeted you i held up my end of the deal you know, I did the classic stuttering John retweet, which usually there's a huge bump that comes after that. <laughs> but it's so funny, Chrissy, because we goofed on his show and his response was, fuck you. I'm going to sue you guys. I'm going to get lawyers involved. Like that was his initial response. Jesus. Like that's not how a comedian responds to roasting. Like you should have gone on. Well, there's a couple ways you can do it. The, the guys who did it the best, in my opinion, were Come Town. Come Town, after we goofed on them, just started making fun of us and they're doing impressions of us and they're talking about the stuff that we were gooping on. And for one thing, we were making fun of one of the guy's standups because it was his standup routine because it was so silly and they were goofing on him too. They're like, yeah, that is pretty terrible. Those guys are <laughs> right about that. Like, yes, now we're all in on the joke together. It's fun. Yeah. And that's been a great, that's, they didn't have to enjoy our show. They've, you know, it's not like we're doing shows together now. Although some, some podcasts that we've made fun of we've become friends with and we do shows together and stuff, but that's the way to deal with it. If you really don't like what we did, get out and be funnier than me. Yes, oh, and please be funnier, out. yeah. Don't <laughs> make you look right. If you hate, if, <laughs> like if someone hates you so much, don't continually to do shit that makes you look right. I know. John has just handled it the wrong way, every single way possible. And it was, it all started with just, we just reviewed his podcast and we never would have talked about him again probably. <laughs> If had he not, not threatened you fact that yeah that he made a big deal out of it but so then, honestly we are keeping him relevant so really all of us together honestly <laughs> i know he's getting the wat bump the chrissy mayer bump um so had he not threatened you there would be no stuttering john segment correct right <laughs> right the, the op segment op has been great because he's never responded he's never acknowledged that we exist but the OP segment just got such a response from people that it was like, oh, okay, we're hitting into something here. People really like goofing on OP. Let's do that. Stuttering John, I didn't feel that way until he responded the way he did. And then it just turned into a, hey, John said this shit on his show about us. So I'm going to play that. And yeah. by the way, since I was listening to his show, I also heard that he said this and this and this. And then it just turned into like, well, I'm talking about <laughs> like, John. There's so much material here. There's so much yeah, to talk exactly. about. Yeah, oh, my was, gosh. What I do really like about your show is like you listen and react to actual things that happen, real things that are said instead of like, you know, an, some of these other shows, like I, the only example I can think of is Red Bar, who the, he will kind of like create stories. He'll kind of make stuff up and then further, like, I get it. People like a storyline, you know, when there's radio, TV, people like, oh, th this is the follow, tune in for this drama, but he kind of makes stuff up. Um, but he's, you know, he's entertaining. He's engaging. I get why people like it. But I, I really, I, I think I respect your style more because you're like, this is what's really being said well, the, and I happening. think the difference between us and Red Bar, and we reviewed his show, and I, I know the people who listen to WATP also listen to Red Bar. I know we have overlap in, in listeners. But Red Bar, it just takes too long. It takes too long to get to the point. I'd like him mm. more. if I didn't have to sit there for three hours to figure out where he's going with this. <laughs> The, the one thing about WTP is we move things along very quickly, like segment, 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 go, 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 and call it a day. Red Bar has like six hour long programs. Like, oh my, I can't do this. Yeah, it shouldn't take like six hours, a six hour, a six hour podcast to, yeah, get to the meat of it. I would agree with that. <laughs> uh, who are these podcasts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to have that sound effect on my board. I wonder if I still have it. <laughs> uh, I might not. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, he does like his drops. So that's <laughs> funny. Where are you podcasting from, Chrissy? Where are from you? From my apartment. Um, okay. This is like a pink a light bulb. Yeah, I'm in a corner. This is supposed to be my inspiration corner. It's like chalkboard painted paint. And then that's also magnetized. Nice. And 
So do you, yeah. the lighting is very, I guess, kind of like a, a red or a purple hue to Yeah, it. it's pink lights. There's a pink light bulb in here. Okay. Oops. So okay. is this a vibe you're going for on the podcast or is this like how your house is anyway? This is a podcast vibe. Yeah. My house is not, <laughs> my apartment is not like lit with pink bulbs. I think my boyfriend would kill me if that was the case. Oh, okay. um, yeah. I keep, it's pretty gender, gender neutral. It's a lot of grays. Um, yeah. Black and white. I mean, yeah. And at the risk of doxing you, are you in <laughs> or a different borough? Um, no, Westchester. I've said that oh, you're before. Up in Westchester. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because yes. I can't imagine what it's like to live in New York city right now. It seems I, I mean, I feel like the people who are living there are like, it's great. Everything's fine. But like, I can't imagine that's, you know, I mean, I'll go in once a week to do my compound show and I'm like a little bit more looking around than usual, but I'm, I'm getting like rides in and like guys from the studio were like, Hey, if, if you are going to the train, they'll walk me there. Like, it's super nice. Um, there was a time like after a show, we were drinking at the bar across the street at Sullivan's and it was a guy that I had just given, like, I don't often like give out a bunch of money to crackheads, but like this girl that I knew who had just done wet spot was doing another zoom. Like she was really booked that night. She was doing another show zoom, like right outside. And this guy was like arm's length away from her. Like kind of just like, I was like, I gave him 20 bucks. This is all I had. I was like, can you just leave her alone? And then he walked away. And then we were drinking like an hour later, we're drinking across the street. Same guy comes around to our table asking for money. I'm like, I just gave you $20. You yeah, I was so way. mad. It doesn't work that way. You don't get to like pay for them to go away. They keep coming back when you pay them I was like, it's, like just the, the opposite. it's like the fucking squirrels you know oh. <laughs> yeah i get all of my new york city news from anthony kumia and dave landau yeah like, what they bitch about coming into the city there's definitely i mean i i rode the train in well yeah i'll do the metro north subway and then subway metro north back and i did a whole round trip without wearing a mask which was pretty cool and nobody said anything and i was like wow this feels like a little bit of a win um Wow, you're a rebel. For rights, yeah. They say that there's going to be a fine, but it's like nobody nobody wants to yell at you, I think, for not wearing a mask. Nobody wants to give you a fine. I think they just, the signs have to be out there for brainwashing. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to have this turn into a conspiracy podcast. I How do you find podcasts to review? Is it mostly you seek them out? Or I see a lot of people on Twitter will like tag you. Is it yes. mostly fans that, that it's mostly tell you? Submissions. So what happens is people send them into our email address or they with a form on our website and people go in there and they give us suggestions. And I have a word doc where I, every time someone says a suggestion, cause I'll just forget about it. I copy it and paste it into a word doc. So I have about a 90 page word doc with suggestions. What? We're way backlogged. And then in our discord server, there's a channel in there for review suggestions. And people post it in there. And then we also get Twitter and the subreddit and stuff. So they're constantly coming in at us. What I look for is information around why it would be fun to goof on. So sometimes people just be at, come in and just go, you should listen to blah, 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 blah. You know, sincerely, Jim. Like, and is it just their own podcast? <laughs> and trying to plug it. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And so I don't have time to listen to a thousand podcasts a week. So I really need people to give me some more information on why it might be funny. When people write in reasons why a show, <laughs> for example, the show we just did, Polly MF20, Chad Zumach reached out to me and said, hey, I think we should do this show. It's this guy from the Maxwell show, gave a little bit of a background. You know, Jim Norton wrote about him in his book. Opie and Anthony had a feud with this guy. He sucks. I'm like, all right, this, is all, this all sounds good. I like it. So that was a compelling argument with, and we're doing the show because of it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's people who write in their suggestions and, and give me reasons to goof on other people's podcasts. So do you think that was a, an elaborate ruse just so he could get on and uh, speak well of John Melendez? <laughs> no, I don't. Because if you listen to the first 45 minutes of the, the podcast we just put out on uh, Who Are These Podcasts, he has a lot of anger towards this guy this kind of just in general it seems yeah. <laughs> well that too but he's like really still pissed off about their radio feud that happened over 10 years ago he's still oh pissed wow off. wow all right cool i was gonna say he's probably gonna hang on to the my twitter feud with him for another 10 years great probably. Can't wait. <laughs> yep. oh wow so he was really mad at this guy that you were talking about on the show 
Oh, it's it's ferocious. And that's one of the funny things about this past episode, I said it was pretty controversial, is typically we go on the show and we don't have any personal connection to the podcast that we're roasting. And again, we're just trying to create funny content. It's like a roast. That's the whole point of it. But he came on with a real ax to grind. And he's like, I fucking hate this guy. He's a real piece of shit. He's an asshole. It's like, oh, okay, we could do that too. I typically just goof on people and call it a day and move on. But yeah, if you want to get real with us, we could do that. You're like, I just focus on the podcasting and sort of like how good or bad it is and the flaws. Like we're getting into this guy's personal life. Did he give his like real specific reasons for why he hated him? He did. And I guess this guy was a really big piece of shit to work with when he was at WMMS in Cleveland to the point where he had the number one rated show in the afternoon and they still fired him because Uh. he's such an asshole to everyone. And I do love those behind the scenes radio things. That's why I obsess on Opie so much because he was (laughs) such a prick to everyone. And I love it when these people who have a position of power and they're the ones behind the mic and they're the ones who can tell people what to do. And then they lose that position of power and they come back and (gasps) be like, Oh, nobody likes me what happened? Why don't I have any friends? And that was one of the things we found out about this guy, Benjamin Bornstein or or Polly was he's been like reaching out to his co-hosts from yesteryear and they want nothing to do. (gasps) Wow. They won't come on his podcast. They don't want to get together for dinner. Yeah. I kind of like it when people get their comeuppance. Kind of. Yeah. Cause I I remember I was like texting with Mitch Fatel and he was like sending me these messages from John. Like, Hey, did you retweet pictures of his kids? I was like, no, I, I didn't even, honestly, didn't even know he had kids, like, let alone, I would never, I can't think of anything less interesting to I talk about. I you had or not, but I was 98% sure that you had, because it didn't sound like something you would do. I, would you have time? I that? actually, like, love, I would love and respect, I would respect his kids more than him. So no, that would be the last thing. Right. This I would find interesting. Up. Oh, yeah. yeah, I like kids. <laughs> and uh, so, so Mitch is like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's full of shit, but I just wanted to check with you. He's like, I'm not going to respond. I'm probably just going to ignore him or block him or whatever. And John I was like, out to Mitch? what? John reached out to yeah, Mitch. Yeah, John reached out to Mitch. Like, how dare you uh, go on a podcast uh, of someone who retweets oh. pictures of my kids? That's his angle. See, that's the thing. Yeah. You can't he, say I, I embarrassed myself on her show. I was drunk. And I'm not funny and I don't know how to answer questions. Yeah. He has to pretend you did something. It's much easier to create a story that I like got into his personal life, which I can't think of anything less interesting. Also, <sighs> he was mad at Mitch for going on your show. He should have been mad at Mitch for what Mitch said about him. <laughs> that, that nobody no expected him. Successful yeah. in life. Not himself, not his parents. <laughs> nobody thought he was going to be successful. I was like, yes. <laughs> That's the money shot right that's there. Good. That's not bad. I mean, that means you did better than everyone's expectations. That, that's a good way to look at it. But, but John can't look at it that way. John's whole thing was he would have been famous if Howard Stern had never br- brought him in. He was so talented. He was going to be famous no matter what happened. And wow. it couldn't be further from the truth. It's so funny. It's like, no, John, you were the stunt boy on the Howard Stern show. That's why we know your name. You he has whatever the opposite of imposter syndrome is stuttering john you know what i mean like i don't know if it has a name imposter syndrome is when it's like no matter how good you are you think you're not good enough and you're always like a little bit like ooh, i don't know it's actually there's a term for it called the dunning kruger effect i've talked about this on the show before and what the dunning kruger effect is i encourage you to look it up because you'll find out there's a lot of people you know like this is dunning kruger dunning kruger it's named after the two scientists who kind of researched this and figured this out What happens is when somebody gets really into a specific field of study Hmm. and they learn a lot about it, and I'll I'll use Joe Rogan as a good example of this. The more you learn about a specific field of study, the more you realize how little you know. And you feel like, oh my God, I can never know enough about comedy or performance or broadcasting or whatever it is that you're doing. Someone who's logical will realize that there's so much more out there. Dunning-Kruger are people who think they know everything and are actually the worst at it. So the Dunning-Kruger effect is John has had all the success. He thinks that he's earned all of it. He thinks that the reason why stuttering John Melendez is a household name is because stuttering John is just so talented. Nobody can stutter like him. (laughs) Right. Which he didn't even, he barely stuttered on my podcast. I think he stuttered once when he remembered to do it. I was like, wow. (laughs) You think he's just putting it on now? (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. It's like he's got to play his greatest hits. Like if he, concert. yeah, like if he doesn't want to answer a hard question, the, the stuttering suddenly comes back. 
Yeah, I know. That's funny you say that. I was playing his show on someone else's show. And that was the first thing they said. They're like, he's not even stuttering anymore. Like, that's the only thing we I want my money back. Yeah. You can't even do that. What the fuck? So I didn't mean to cut you off. So like, yeah, he thinks he just, uh, he somehow got real confident because he got all the success. What? Like in his twenties, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, imagine you're on the Howard Stern show and what that must have meant to be living in New York city on a show that I think almost 25% of radio listeners who are listening to every morning, that guy was killing it. So wow. if you're stuttering John, I mean, probably everybody's kissing your ass. Oh, what a funny bit. I heard you on the radio this morning. It was so great. For years. Yeah. You think, oh, wow. Everyone, I'm really respected. I'm because he's used to it for years. Everyone calling him funny when really maybe they want to get next to somebody who's well known or maybe they and are then, trying to get stuff Jay out of Leno, him. Jay Leno reaches out because him and Howard Stern are feuding and uses him as a revenge fuck on Howard <laughs> and hires him away. And that's all it was. And that's the other funny thing too, is that Stuttering John was just a pawn and they hired him to be the announcer, which is a goof. I mean, obviously he thought he was, he thought he was legitimately a good announcer for the Tonight Show. Wow. He's a buffoon. So he hired him away from Howard as a goof and a fuck you to Howard. And uh, that only reinforced how talented he is. Like, of course I should be going to Hollywood and then, get a kind of television show. Then didn't he get sort of promoted away, quietly, away from the announcer position? Yeah, they took him off air pretty quickly and they <laughs> they pretended that he was a writer. And wow. they gave him the bits to do. It they gave like, me my own notebook. <laughs> he got and, his uh, own notebook. My own pen. College rule. I went to college. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so. like good for him good for him to do well i just feel like yeah that's what happens when you when you're rich him, and it's or the famous it happened to him <laughs> because he's a miserable human being now honestly it's the worst way to live your life is to get everything you ever wanted and have it all taken away from you there's yes. a great south park episode where cartman gets his own amusement park and then he gets it all taken away from him and it's the worst feeling there is stuttering john is in a place and i think even mitch said this where the reason why he takes it out on the rest of the world and he's such an asshole, such a raging asshole, <laughs> is because he's so unhappy with himself and his own life. He had everything you could possibly want and lost it all. And now look at him. He's living in a cockroach infested apartment in LA. I love when you said, they are not in your apartment door, John. Wait, what? <laughs> that was one of my favorite things. Wait, what was it? Oh, so he was talking about Secret Service came after he pranked the president. Oh, my God. And you go, oh, they knocked on your apartment door? And he's like, well, it's, it's a condo. Do you know, I've just, like, I'm so, I've lived in apartments for, for 10 plus years. I'm just in, like, I'm literally just in, like, apartment mode. Like, I don't think, I think that, like, people not in comedy live in houses. Like, pe my brother and sister that are doing well, like, they live in ha house. Like, those are house people. And I just think all of us, we're apartment people. I, I didn't mean, I was just like, oh, they're outside your apartment. Like, and then, yeah, he was like, oh, my condo. And I was like, what? Why? What? Who cares what the difference is? Oh, no, he took that as a, a slight. I think that set him off a little bit. It was so funny. Oh, my God. It's so anyway, many slights I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Johnny, where it's been too much about John. But just to conclude, I do think <laughs> he's a very miserable, miserable person. And when you say, well, you know, good for him, even though he didn't deserve it, it's like, it's actually worked out in just the opposite. He's, he's not doing well. He's not a healthy person. I think, yeah, maybe the success kind of fucked with him like you know when kids are molested it's like you're kind of frozen in that time and you are you know it's it takes a lot of work and therapy to move forward like to move forward but you're kind of like still emotionally that age i wonder if that's what happened to him like because being successful a, a huge success is in a way it's not like it's trauma but it's a big point if that happens in your 20s maybe you're kind of maybe he's still frozen up there in success land everyone loves me i don't have to grow i don't have to learn i don't have to get better i don't have to write more you know, I can just drink all day and, and keep winning, so. Look at how Opie's dealing with it. He's doing terrible. And Opie was at the very top. He yeah. was, he had the biggest radio show outside of Howard Stern. Uh, and now he's talking to Facebook Live to a hundred people at a time. And he won't just go away. He can't stop himself. Like Stuttering John and Opie, these guys, they need to just go away. It's over. It, it, I mean, he had a good run. Ugh. You know, enjoy it. It's Look a little sad. Yeah, now. I feel sad for all these people. Oh, don't feel sad. That's not what we're for. I know. I know. I know. I'm so like empathetic though, because I really am like these are sad people. Chad, John, they're they're sad people. So, Chrissy, come on. That's not. Uh, there's no crying on WATP. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Have you ever made anybody quit podcasting, or has there ever been a time you've reviewed a show and someone's like 
privately message you or something like, Hey, I was really offended or Hey, take it down or Hey, I'm hurt. Yeah. We had a, uh, an issue with a show called the vanish and it's a show that follows missing people. So it's a true crime show. And this woman, Marissa Jones, uh, sent me a note telling me to take it down. Then she sent a note to my syndication company, Libsyn, telling them oh, to take wow. it down. She sent a note to iTunes <gasps> telling them to take it down. She threatened legal action. None of it worked. None of it worked because we're not breaking any laws or anything like that. Uh, there's fair use within the Copyright Act. So there were no, no issues with it. But eventually she was so upset about it that she has a huge following. Uh, something like 60,000 Twitter followers and this huge Facebook group that she runs. Wow. So eventually she just got everybody, she docks me and got everybody to tweet and <gasps> go on LinkedIn and Facebook to my company and my business oh my partners God. and try to get me fired. What so yeah, we've definitely rubbed people the wrong way from what, time to time. What was it that got her so angry? You know, it's interesting. I think her concern was she interviews people like the parents of missing children. And um, she was concerned that people wouldn't want to go on her show if they thought they might be ridiculed, which isn't a terrible argument. However, this was very much a, Streis a, Streis a Streisand effect. Are you familiar with the Streisand effect? No. <laughs> so Barbara Streisand tried to get aerial pictures of her home taken off the internet. Oh. Because she has this huge estate. I think it's out in Malibu or something. She has this huge estate and she didn't want people seeing it. And of course, this was like right around the time that Google Earth was coming about. And she was trying to get it blocked. No one knew that was her house. But uh. then she found out that she was trying to get it blocked. So it turned out that 10, 20 fold more people ended up seeing it because yeah. she was saying, don't look at this. I don't want people to see it. So this woman, Marissa Jones, my show wasn't very big at the time. Marissa <laughs> Jones tells everyone, this podcast is the worst. This guy's an asshole. We got to get him fired. And it turned out that way more people, that was my most downloaded episode by far. Wow. Way more people found out about WTP, heard that episode. It would have just kind of gone away and no one would have really known about it. But she had to like shine a spotlight on it so hard that it did the opposite. Like if you're really this offended by it, then why are you telling everyone that it exists? It's really Damn. stupid. Right, because they can't, it's like, what, that's what, not to bring up starting John, John again, but that's what Sorry. he did. He was like, he wanted to be upset. I don't know why he like is, was upset with my boyfriend who like kind of had nothing to do with it. And he was like, oh, don't ever go to White Plains Comedy Club. That place really sucks. I'm like that place is really close. Just like every other comedy club in New York. <laughs> and that was one of the funniest things ever. He thought that he was like, and by the way, there's no thing as bad publicity. Yeah. When you're talking about the place. He's like, oh, I'd never even heard of that place. Plus it sucks. Like, well, it can't be both. If you've yeah. never heard of it. I don't want to talk about her. I don't want to talk about Ditsy. Ditsy <laughs> Mayor. Even though I'm getting super chats. Oh, my God. It's so funny. So, oh, my God. So, th well, this lady got you a ton of traffic and a ton of attention, which was really, did it ultimately become become a good thing? You know, it, despite, it ultimately became yeah. a good thing because uh, it's a, it, it, there's a long story involved. And I've gone on other people's shows and talked about it. So it's given me something to talk about. Also, I ended up taking down the episode. And, oh yeah it got to the point where my, my, yeah. my business partner was like carl you just take it down I'm like that's fine all right i'll take it down but now i use it as incentive if you join our patreon Ooh. That episode that is uh forbidden it is nowhere on the behind the paywall and for a wow. while when people would buy merchandise if they sent me a, a picture of a t-shirt or a sticker or something i'd send them the episode so it's actually worked out really well as an incentive incentivizing the listeners to support us yeah it's a it's a patreon carrot you can dangle right what do you think we're your funny too, it's funny too chris again, i'm sorry to cut you off okay. because we've talked about this whole saga and it got taken down it was this whole big deal and people were like oh i gotta hear what this episode was it must have been the craziest episode ever and then they hear it and they're like oh that was kind of just a normal it? yeah i know, <laughs> I know it was. that's what's so crazy about this <laughs> i don't want to make a big deal about it like, like this, so they're sort of bummed the patreon's like really that's it carl can we at least see like a nude photo of you or something on here like <laughs> something else <laughs> yeah you gotta set up for a higher tier if you want to see that Ooh. um you were mentioning you know listening to howard or like you know being an opening and anthony fan uh like way back when yeah. what were your inspirations in starting who are these podcasts was it jocktober from opening anthony was it howard um <laughs> Yeah, it was 100% Jocktober. So Jocktober was my favorite segment on Opie and Anthony. 
And every time October, I remember my wife and I would get excited. We're like, oh, it's October. You know, we'd go every episode of Opie and Anthony and, and talk about it because it was the funniest shit. Especially if you're listening in real time and you can kind of follow the, the show that they're talking about and see their Facebook page get taken down. And watch really? Wow. Account. Yeah, because people would just go after these shows really hard. So I always loved that show. And when Anthony left Sirius XM, uh, October went away. And there was a couple of years there. And I was talking to my, my buddy, Kevin, who's a stand-up comedian. And I said, or he wanted to start a podcast. And I said, we should redo Jocktober, but for podcast. And I also based on the show, No Agenda that I listened to. Are you familiar with No Agenda? No. Adam Curry, the uh, ex-MTV VJ and John C. Dvorak. They host a show that kind of analyzes the news media and will play clips from all these different newscasts and really dig into kind of behind the scenes what they're trying to accomplish, what the agenda is, and propaganda, like really dig into it. I thought, I think that show was fascinating. I love that they do that. So I kind of take it from an, a more analytical angle than Jocktober was. Jocktober was just like Jim Norton, like making jokes and the, mm -hmm. the, you know, it was really funny. And who are these podcasts? We do that, but we also kind of try to analyze like, what are they going for? What are they doing wrong? Why are they doing it this way? How could they do it? And get a little bit more analytical with it. So it's kind of a, a hybrid of those two things. Yeah, that's nice. Cause it's one thing to be like, <clears throat> Yeah, this person sucks, but then it's like, oh, well, why do they suck? Well, also, <laughs> when, I, when we decided to start this thing, I knew I couldn't be as funny as Anthony and Jim Norton ripping on a show. <laughs> I'm not as funny as those guys. So I'm like, well, we can't just pretend that we're going to be the Opie and Anthony to podcasting. So it's got to be a little bit different. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's like, it's really unique. It's really original. Did you listen to ONA back when they were doing uh, Jacktober? I was getting into it. I got into it more like as I started to go on in hot water just for like two years ago. And it's like, I, I remember in high school, like friends of mine were into Opie and Anthony. I would, there were wow stickers everywhere. I grew up on Long Island, um, but it just was like, I think I just missed it. Like comedically, I didn't really grow into where I was going to be until God, like maybe like my late twenties you know, early thirties, it really like took a while to, for like, I don't know, for things to get twisted and funnier. So. I, I listened to a ton of talk radio, sports talk, political. I just love talk radio. I've always loved that format. And when I first heard Opie and Anthony, it, it, something just jumped out. I'm like, oh, this is different. These guys are, I, heard, I listened to a lot of shows like Don and Mike who tried to be funny and it was like eh, mm. entertaining, but never funny. But then you listen to, G, you know, Jim Norton and Anthony Cumia and the guys they would bring in like Bill Burr and everyone. As a oh cold god shit. how they can riff is like on all the time you're yeah. like wow these guys are at another level and yeah definitely, definitely inspired i think a lot of people to go out and do podcasts for sure yeah yeah it's like it's really amazing it's it, it makes me want to go back and like listen to more like old episodes for sure i don't know and i feel like there's things you can't really get away with as much now but, but then it's like, but then we are, because then you have compound media where they don't censor us and we can kind of like make all, all the sick jokes we want. So they don't uh, censor you as you tell you what to say to stuttering John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As we all know, John, cut that part out. So you can play it on your <laughs> show every time that we're being serious. I remember like, I would always hear Gino Bisconti talk about like, he'd go on these like long tangents, like stuttering John fucking sucks. Like I wouldn't hear him get so worked up about anybody else ever. And then I was like, why does he hate this guy? Like, what is going on? Like, he can't be that bad. And then, and then I talked to him and do a pod with him. I was like, oh, I totally know what he's talking about now. It's like, do I got to reach out to Gino? Maybe. He, he would have a lot to say for sure. I think he has like kind of a history and I yeah. Love Gino. All right. I might have to reach out to that. He guy. has stories. He has stories for sure. And Gino's kind of like a cat in the way that if you're a bad person, like he knows right away. And he just like, he just has very spot on taste in bad people so yeah. now i kind of use him as my gauge of like you know taste in people and i called him as soon as we were done i was like oh my god you know it was so bad it was so awkward we fought he was like i fucking knew it <laughs> he hit on me at the end i have to go out to la yeah. to with this guy let's it's go thing. drink i was like what <laughs> <laughs> no i don't want to go drink with you um that's really interesting to me. Well, who do you think was like the worst guest you've ever had? As a co-host? Yeah. Oh, I would never say that. Okay. <laughs> who do you think? <laughs> WATP to help us out. Oh, right, right. <laughs> it's me. No. <laughs> who do you think was the worst podcast you've ever reviewed? We, li we reviewed this show and there've been so many, so forgive me. And this isn't going to be the, the most interesting answer. 
but there was a podcast called Best Pickup Lines or uh, Worst Pickup Lines or something like that. And it's really funny. It was a one-off episode. And you know that movie, The Room? Yes. <laughs> I, lo- I love, I love the, room. the Room. I love it. It's my favorite. I've watched it a thousand times. Oh, this hi, podcast Mark. <laughs> podcast was The Room of Podcasting. Oh, no. You guys did everything wrong to the point where I'm like, this can't be real. They thought that this, this was going to be a show. The co-hosts are arguing with each other. They, they come on, they're going to talk about pickup lines. No one has a single pickup line. Like, all right, so what do you think is the best pickup line? Like, I don't, I don't even know any pickup lines. It's, it was so funny. Oh, God. They could have Googled. They could have Googled pickup lines. I know. And now it's gone from the internet. The only trace of it, because people ask me, the only trace of it is the clips I played on, uh, on WATP. And that was, this is going back probably three or four years now that we did that. But, man, I'll I tell you, ask me what the worst podcast is. And I seem to keep finding ones the top, the last one all the time. There's so many bad podcasts out there. Opie's putting out the worst show possible right now. He's gotten so bad. It's unbelievable. He's just talking to Facebook live and that's the podcast. No. Out. Oh no. It's, it's crazy. And, uh, and Stuttering John speaks for himself. I mean, it's, it's shockingly bad. I mean, Carl, I'm going to have to take care of you quietly behind the scenes. <laughs> behind the scenes. I can't have you saying these things that are true. Chrissy, he literally said he knows what my address is. He knows where I live. He's going to take care of things. I'm like, just say it. What the, what the fuck are you saying? What, and what the fact that, that like Chad would stick up for this kind of threatening. That's what I mean. I think he's trolling me. You I, know, I, I think it's me. like a, it's just like a Howard Stern thing to do. Is just say, I know where you live. And he's just, you know, trying to be shocking. <laughs> yeah, it didn't make any sense to me. Wow. I don't think that was the case. That's fucking lame. It's like one of these guys that's like drunk and always wants to fight, you know, like over nothing. Like somebody barely grazes his shoulders, like, what? <laughs> I'm going to fuck your mom. <laughs> yeah, he <you> escalates <laughs> it a little bit too quick. You're like, yeah, and you're no, like, I said, I said uh... excuse me, I apologize. I'll buy you a drink. It's fine. You don't have to, you don't have to murder my parents. I'll, I'll get you a drink. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> like, I just spilled your water. I got real quick. Whoa. <laughs> down over there. Oh, boy. Were there ever any podcasts where, you at first shit on and then maybe you grew to like them or you grew to appreciate them or they got real better. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so who's right is a podcast where they reached out to me and they said, review our show. And there's this guy that Doug and Anthony host the show and God, it was fucking terrible. It was like one of these typical shows where it's like two guys in the Midwest who have listened to Bubba the Love Sponge all their lives and now think that they can do like an edgy show. So like in the middle of it, this one guy goes, I'm going to go take a shit. And he brings the microphone into the bathroom with him. <gasps> no. 20 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, uh, sorry guys. I, that's not how this works. Like you got to be interesting first. And then you can do these kinds of pranks and antics and people might be interested, but this isn't, you know, I, I ripped at him pretty hard. And uh, Doug had a great sense of humor about it. He's since come on the show. I had him and Anthony on the show co-hosting and we've done a ton of work together since then and he's he told me he changed his show format drastically after that wow learned a lot from our critique and their show has done a lot better they've grown a ton uh so yes i've definitely had shows that have taken our critiques and used that to make them a better i've actually had a lot of people reach out to me too and say i listen to your podcast because it is like a one-on-one on how to podcast and has helped me get a lot better at what I do. I hopefully, Chrissy, you're listening. Yes. <laughs> how does it make you feel? Like, did you? You probably didn't set out to try and make people better. No, that was never my intention. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, I, I we're doing Jocktober right now in October, where we're doing radio guys shows and uh, or ex radio guys or maybe radio shows that also put out a podcast. And uh, we're doing a show this weekend coming up, the Eric Zane Show podcast. Mm. He's a, an ex-radio guy. And he discovered us and did a segment about us and talked about how spot on we are about shows and how much we understand. He, he figured that I had a big radio background. You sound and, like you do. Like you well, sound and very Drew radio-y. And Mike, Drew and Mike's another one. Drew and Mike out of Detroit. Uh, I go on their show now every other week and we do a segment. And Drew and I talk all the time. And Drew Lane has been in radio forever, huge following, tons of listeners. And he thought that I had a, a radio background. So that's always been really shocking to me 
when people who actually do this stuff, and I've always just been a listener and I enjoy radio, but I never worked in a radio station. And these people wow. who do that, listen to them, they go, oh, this guy obviously has a radio background. He really knows his shit. You know, even like E-Rock who came on the show and uh, you know, he's helped me out with a lot of things. But it's been amazing when people who know radio have gone, oh, this guy really knows what he's talking about. Brian wow. Johnson from, uh, from Compound Media gave us a really nice compliment recently saying that you know, we're, we're so spot on with our analysis that he doesn't have to think when he's listening to the show. He's like, I know these guys are gonna know the answer. And Wait, who was that that said that? Brian Johnson from- Oh, Brian, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's, uh, he does a show with Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, I heard him say that actually. That's awesome. That must well, feel really great. Thing, that's been the thing for me that I, I've been blown away by and really surprised because I thought I was just going to get on and do like a Jocktober ripoff and goof on people's shows and, and have a couple chuckles. But the idea that uh, people are listening and going, oh, this person knows what he's talking about. And, you know, people are, are getting better shows because of it or learning things from it uh, has definitely been good. Yeah. It's like you're auditing or you're like, uh, I don't know, there's something like professory about it i guess well i'm being a dick i'm being a wise ass and a smart ass but it's not <laughs> how you take it like yeah. some people have a good sense of humor about it and learn from it and then other people just you know are turned off by it like marissa jones god what a cunt <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not gonna call her a cunt i don't really know her i mean chad called me a cunt i don't know <laughs> It's really knocking around up there. Yeah, it's really throwing, people are throwing that word around a lot lately, aren't they? Yeah, it doesn't take much, I guess. I gotta tell you this, this is a fun story. We did a show just two weeks ago called The Native Calgarian, and it's hosted by this woman named Red Thunder Woman, who is an indigenous person up in Calgary, and she is an SJW to the max. And everything is about identity, and Whoa. super political and she runs for office and she hates police and she's you know all this crazy crap <laughs> we goofed at her so hard i think we called her the c word a few times she she discovered the episode and wrote i love this it was so funny i'm so glad somebody you know goofed on me this was great and i was like yes you would think would have the opposite reaction who was like who just took it in stride like this is what these guys do. I found it funny. I'm like, why is it that an SJW up in Calgary can understand it and understand the format and a guy like Stuttering John takes it the wrong way and just immediately has a fucking problem with me? Wow. You know, I don't know how people uh, receive it, I guess. He's less cool than a Canadian social justice warrior. <laughs> yes, by far. Not even close. Wow, that is not at all what I expected you were going to say. I thought you were going to say, like, she sent you a fucking dead animal in the, way, in the mail. No, like, I like, couldn't threatened. believe it. <laughs> I do get nervous opening mail lately. I'll, I'll be honest uh, with you. Oh, paper mail or email? Paper mail. <laughs> paper mail. I got, a, I got a check from a sponsor recently. And my wife's like, why does that say WATP on? I'm like, no, it's, it's okay. Oh, <laughs> it's no. be money. It's all right. It's all <laughs> you just have her check everything for dust first or like check, check all the mail for powder. <laughs> hey, can you taste this brownie that somebody sent me in the mail? Just make sure it's okay. <laughs> I got these free pills. <laughs> Oh my God, this is exciting. So who, who would you like love to review um, maybe that you haven't yet or, or is it just more like you review based on kind of like what's current, what's interesting to you at the time? There have been a few shows that I've shied away from. For example, uh, the Chapo Trap House. Are you familiar with those? I've guys? heard of it, yeah. yeah. So there, there are a few shows and I've had people reach out to me and say, hey, I want to do Chapo Trap House with you and let's review that show. It's one of the biggest shows on, on the internet. If you look at their Patreon, I think they're pulling down $140,000 a month on Patreon. What? So Whoa. Their audience is ginormous and it really should be addressed by WATP. And I just don't want to deal with those assholes because, I, because they're communists. And I have a feeling that if those people go after me, they will destroy my life. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. There are okay. certain shows that I, I know because they're big podcasts and we should review them that I'm actually just like, I don't, I don't need the aggravation. It's not worth it to me. What about as a Patreon episode? Oh, that's not a, Hey, that's not a bad idea there, Chrissy. There you can do all the uns hey. unspeakables, you know, on Patreon. How much do I uh, owe you for this uh, consultation? Oh, no. It was my pleasure, you know, it's for not calling me a cunt. <laughs> well, not this time. Not this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. And then you could have a whole, like, 
you know, ooh, like restricted zone, have like caution tape. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. I, I kind of like that. The other problem with it, and I was going to also say Joe Rogan, I've never reviewed his show, is I feel like to do it justice, I would need to do so many hours of research, so much listening because there's just so much there. You can't just take a single like Joe Rogan experience episode and be like, this is what Joe Rogan's all about. There's just, there's just too much out there. So some of these shows are a little bit tougher. Yeah, and it's like he's so big and everyone, like a lot of people love him. Not everybody, but like he's widely loved. So it's like, it is a little more interesting to pick on the the smaller ones. Like, especially if it's the, their first Im- um, impression of the podcast is your show. So I actually love doing the shows that have a bigger audience. I find those for myself, some the listeners, it's probably split 50-50. People like when we talk about little shows no one's ever heard of. And then some people only want to hear shows that are, people actually listen to I find that the shows that have a big audience are more interesting. For example, we just did two bears, one cave. Are you familiar with this? No, it's, is it about wildlife? <laughs> no, it's, it's Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. That I have heard of. Yeah. It's on the your mom's house network. Uh, we've done your mom's house as well. When we do these types of shows that have a million views on YouTube after two days of being posted, wow, and you go, wow this is a huge audience. What's going on here? And then you, you break it down and it's garbage. Like there's really <laughs> no entertainment value. These guys are phoning it in. I'm not saying that Tom Segura is not a good comedian. I, I will say that Burton isn't, but I'm not saying that Tom Segura isn't a good comedian, but he's phoning it in. Wow. And, That's disappointing. Well, it's, it's fine. It's great for me. So when you listen <laughs> to those types of shows, those are the ones that I really enjoy the most. You're like, wow, there's millions of people listening to this and it's terrible. <laughs> What's going on here? Try to figure that out. Wow. Yeah. It's like the people who, the powers that be, right? Like that help curate comedy aren't always and have the best taste, you know, like not every Comedy Central special is going to rock your world. So yeah, fact, there's probably definitely- most of them won't. <laughs> I mean, there, there's definitely something to be said for, I'm glad that we're now in the internet age where the cream rises to the top and it's not just an executive saying, this is the next it person, or this is the person we're going to put on the show. And especially with radio, because I think in radio for so long, it was just whoever they put on the radio, that's who we're going to listen to. We only have so many frequencies on the dial. And now because podcasting, like you can choose from 700,000 podcasts, people who have good shows, who put out good shows consistently, pretty much are the ones that get big and get noticed. And I, I love that. I think that's great. But there are still those shows. They're like, this has no business being popular. And yet it's a lot, there's a lot of YouTuber shows that we listen to. And oh it's probably God. generational. God bless uh, you for listening to YouTube. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. These guys. <laughs> I tried to listen to Impulsive the other day. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> Logan Paul. It's just like, this is, this is nonsense. These guys don't know how to run a show at all. And yet they're making millions of dollars and they have millions of listeners. Like, all right. Good for them. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't get it, but maybe it's not for me. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. Maybe it's for the youth. I'm not sure. A lot of, I do know what you mean. Like these YouTuber shows just seems like kids running around without a babysitter. Like they're just, you know, yeah. like, Oh, it's the, the, um, the substitute teacher's in today. We, <laughs> I get, get really angry. annoyed with people who think they can just sit around and shoot the shit without any preparation, without any idea what they're going to talk about. They just think it's going to be a fun, interesting conversation. And it almost never is. I really appreciate shows that do some prep work, maybe have some segments, maybe know what they're going to talk about. It's always more entertaining. Yeah. So you would say for any podcast listening, you know, yeah, do some prep work, know what you're going to talk about, have, have conversation points in mind, a specific reason why you're talking to this person at this time. Yeah, maybe else? try to accomplish something. I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? By the end of the show, we're going to find out blah, blah, blah. You know, we're going to dive into this. I don't know. Like yeah. you've been doing to learn more about WATP today. You've got to find yes. <laughs> yes. Making nice with WATP. No, you guys are great. This is cool. Um, where can people find you, follow you, support you? Check out your Patreon for these exclusive episodes that you're yeah, going to do. Thank, yeah, thank you. If you go to whoarethese.com, we have links to all of the things. We have a subreddit, a Discord server, a YouTube channel. We're on Twitter. Uh, definitely the Patreon we put out two bonus episodes every single month. Like I said, I do a crossover show with Dick Masterson and the Dick Show. That's a lot of fun. And uh, we actually put up more content than that, but I, I just guarantee there'll be two bonus episodes every month. The bonus episodes are a lot of fun. They're looser. They're, I have more fun doing them because I know that no one's stumbling upon it. The, the thing that I do with WATP is I assume 
any show that I do could be the first time someone's ever heard the show. So I okay, don't assume yeah, yeah. anything. I don't assume you know what we're talking about or why we're talking about it. I, I really try to explain, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And, and really, I, I don't want anyone to listen to me like, I don't even know why I'm listening. What's, what am I listening to? With a bonus episode, I know everybody there has heard the show. They like the show. So we can have a little bit more fun with it. And if you sign up on Patreon, you get all of our past content too. So there's tons of episodes, dozens of episodes up there uh, to check out for as low as five bucks a month. Ooh, that sounds like a steal. Oh, it is, Chrissy. It is. <laughs> You'd be crazy not to buy it. You would be. You would be crazy not to get up on it. And you know what I forgot to plug earlier is I'm going to be headlining. I'm going to be doing a little bit of comedy dabbling, headlining at Tiff's Ale House on October 21st. That's a Wednesday. Tiff's Ale House in Morris Plains, New Jersey. Get your tickets now. Mike Figs, uh, my little co-host from the Wet Spot, will be featuring for me. And Bob Levy will be hosting. So check oh, out yeah, that Reverend joke. Bob Levy, yes. Cool. Bob Levy's the best. Carl, thank you so much for coming on. This was really great. Um, yeah, I'm glad that I'm so happy that we're friends now. Thanks for having <laughs> me, Chris. It was really fun talking to you today. <laughs> you too. Bye. All right. See ya.